The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Once again, for that voyage we take together through those dark and hidden recesses of our own imagination. A philosopher tells us that by an accident of fortune, a man may rule the world for a time. But by virtue of love, he may rule the world forever. Love. There seems to be so much love all around us. It appears to grow wild, like some exotic plant in a tropical jungle. And yet, with so much love everywhere, why are so few of us kings? No. No, I don't think any, no. But you're such a fine artist, you should. No. No, you see, I... I put someone down on canvas, and it's not just his likeness, it's, it's also... Yes, it's also... It, it's also his personality. And so, he will convey to the viewer some of his innermost secrets. I don't believe that's possible. Yes, yes. The canvas will not conceal any of your secrets. It will betray everything, even if... even if he has committed murder. Now, shall I paint your portrait? No. Oh, no. <laughs> mystery drama, Sister of Death, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars K.T. Stevens. It is sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. stranger were to stop you on the street and say, here, for you, is a $100 bill. Take it. It's yours. No strings attached. What would your instinctive reaction be? Would you reply, how generous, a thousand thanks? Probably not. You would more likely say, what's in it for you? Or, uh, what are you selling? Or, need it before I call a cop? And with good reason. So many of us have become rather sharp-nosed and narrow-eyed. But uh, here and there is still the occasional optimist, the rare believer in the goodness of man, the exceptional, kind-hearted, trusting soul who simply refuses to recognize evil. You're about to meet one of them. She's young and pretty. Oh, I got seventy dollars, big seventy dollars. Who'll give me seventy-five? Seventy-five? Why is seventy-five? Oh, ladies and gentlemen, this magnificent portrait in oils. It cannot be sold for seventy-five dollars. It can only be stolen. Seventy-two fifty. Seventy-two fifty. A young lady with the courage of an ancient Amazon warrior. <laughs> Do you accept my bid? Do I accept your bid? Seventy-two fifty, ladies and gentlemen. Shall you stand by and see the crime of the century perpetrated? Will no one say seventy-five? Seventy-five. Oh, dear lady, you must not bid against yourself. Oh. Very well, my friends. Let it be on your own consciences. Seventy-two fifty-one. Seventy-two, fifty-five. So, 
Sold for seventy-two fifty. You mean it's mine? Yes, dear lady, it's yours. It's all yours. <laughs> This fantastic bargain, Anita. Silly. Oh, Just wait till you see it. Oh, where is it? I even knew exactly where I wanted to hang it. Hang it? Oh, is it a picture, Anita? Oh, nobody can ever keep a secret from you. What kind of picture is it? Chili, it's the buy of the century. Who painted it? Well, it wasn't anyone you might have heard of. It's... It's Corral. Corral? Mm-hmm. He signs his name in big letters. Uh, is his first name Sebastian? Sebastian? How did you know? Sebastian Corral. Oh, you heard of him. You actually heard of him. Anita, where's the painting? You'll never guess. Anita, let me look at the painting. Come upstairs. I put it in the bedroom. It just seemed to belong there. Seventy-two fifty for a Sebastian Corral, and you never even heard of him, which means he's not just some unknown. So that's where all that promise ended up. And as we say, voila! Oh, behold, my magnificent painting. Well, say something. The minute I saw this painting, I knew I'd have to buy it. Do you know why? Because. I felt I knew this girl. Oh, it's ridiculous. I never saw her before in my life, but I feel we're friends. She looks as if she's trying to tell me something. Anita, I am in the title. It, well, I mean, how do you account for the title? Young Lady with a Fan. That's what fascinates me. She's the last person in the world you'd expect to have a fan. <laughs> she's actually wearing a tennis outfit. And she's holding this beautiful, delicately carved ivory fan. How do you like her? Uh, I am uh, uh, not sure I know what to say. Tilly, you're so pale. What's wrong? Uh, maybe I shouldn't tell you anything. But you're so serious. What is it? The, the girl. The girl? The woman in that painting, it's Alma. Alma? Oh, that's right. You couldn't have known her. Who is Alma? Well, your husband's first wife. I remember when she posed for that portrait. Who, who did you say she was? Alma. I, I, I often wondered what had become of the painting. Did you say she was Herbert's first wife? Why? And at the time, Herbert didn't like the idea of her posing for Sebastian Corrali. You were... Oh, you knew that Herb had been married before. I... Well, I... I oh, oh, I'm sorry. I, it, it's all right. Well, I, I just naturally assumed that, that he would have... As a matter of fact, now that you mention it, he, he did tell me. I need uh, It just... Slipped my mind for a moment, I guess. Darling, you don't have to protect everybody all the time against everything. I can understand why you wouldn't tell me. Can you? Herbert is an incurable romantic. We both feel as if our... as if our lives really began the day we met. And that nothing in the past is material or relevant or... Or of any importance. But, dear, your lives didn't begin the day you met, and there was a past, and it did shape your existence. Tilly. Yes? Maybe I shouldn't ask, but mm -hmm. you want to know about Alma. Yes. Not nearly as pretty or as charming as you. Oh, I, I don't mean that. Where is she now? Oh. She's, uh, dead. Dead? Yes. She was killed. Oh, how awful. She, um... She was murdered. She... She was where? In this room. No. She was all alone. Herb was out of town. It, it, it was a robbery. Evidently, she'd come home and surprised the thief, or he had surprised her. Did they... Did they ever catch... No. It remains unsolved. 
And you say the place was robbed? Oh, yes. Everything of value, jewels, silver. Did the police ever find any of it? No. And it happened right here in this room? Mm. Right here. It's a little scary because the painting was hanging on the wall just where you have it hanging now exactly. Oh, it's quite a coincidence. I suppose you could say the painting saw it all. In a manner of speaking, you could say that. The painting is a witness. She actually saw herself being killed. And me, don't really. Well, it's true, isn't it? You look into those eyes and... And they look back into yours and they... They seem to want to say something. If they ever do, let me know what. But right now, the important thing about that painting is... What am I going to do about it? Yes. What are you going to do about it? I shouldn't let her know. Why not? It would be too embarrassing, too painful. I still say Herbert should have told you he'd been married before. I only know that Herbert and I are very happy. All this nonsense about her being a romantic. I should think that Herb neglected to tell you something that was very vital. But it doesn't matter to me. Oh, sure. The fact is, you're afraid to raise an issue. If you don't want to open up a giant-sized can of worms, you'll just have to get rid of the portrait. I know, but... Yes, but... I think that would be... Don't laugh. I won't. I think that would be cruel. Cool, because she's not just some figment of an artist's imagination. No, she's not. She isn't even a strange woman. She, well, she was someone who lived here, who died here. This is her home. How can I throw her out? It's a rather unique view, but it's my view. However, you must do something. I know. I know. I I'll have to think. You better start thinking right away. It's getting on toward five o'clock. Then, will you please get out of here and give me a chance to collect my thoughts? Yes, that's certainly what Anita needs. A chance to think and collect her thoughts. Why don't we all give her that opportunity? Why don't you listen to some extremely provocative thoughts on some other important subjects? And I'll bring Anita and her problem back here in just a few moments with Act Two. There is a fresh new spirit sweeping the land. A free spirit that demands good products. Products that satisfy your sense of good taste and desire for economy. But above all, products that perform. Buick has been touched by this spirit. And this year, our crisply designed, solidly built Buick will bring joy even to the most demanding of free spirits. The 1975 Buick. Dedicated to the free spirit in just about everything. This is Lloyd Nolan. My son Jay was physically perfect. I guess he was about two years old before we realized that anything was wrong. At first, we thought he was deaf. That's what the parents of most autistic children think. At that time, I don't think we knew any parents of an autistic child. It would have been a great blessing to us to have had a National Society for Autistic Children. Support the National Society, Box 8646, Albany, New York, 12208. <laughs>
a young lady named Anita Sutliff was very much taken with a painting at an art auction. So, she bought it. Immediately after, she discovered by accident that the painting is a portrait of her husband's former wife, Alma. And it seems that Alma had been murdered during a robbery at the house. All this would be shocking enough, but you must also consider one additional fact. Anita didn't know that her husband, Herbert, had been married before. Penny, for your thoughts, darling. Oh, my thoughts aren't very deep. I must have been daydreaming. Oh, about what? Nothing. Nothing, really. The fish is excellent, darling. Thank you. Did you have a hard day? Oh, huh. well, they're all hard. Poor head. Why do people lie all the time? A man says he wants a safe, conservative investment. It's a lie. What he really wants is a stock that will double itself in six months and pay a 20% dividend, tax-free. Oh, darling, I'm sure people must be more reasonable than that. Oh, when it comes to money, no one's reasonable. Some of the people who walk into my office... Come on, come on. Though I must never bring these things home with me. But, Herb, there's no reason why you shouldn't kill Darling, me. this place to me is a citadel. It's where two unusually blessed people live in complete faith and love and harmony. Darling, you... You do love me, don't you? No matter how many times you ask, the answer will always be yes. I look at you and I say, no two people have ever been so... so close. So completely as one, so open, so free. No secrets between us. No secrets. No secrets. I... Yes, dear? Uh, would you care for some coffee? Oh, no, I've, uh, I've had enough. Oh, who do you suppose that is? Probably Tilly. Tilly? Oh, I'm in no mood for her tonight. But darling, she's your cousin. Uh, Hi. The door was open. How are things? I uh, think I have a headache. Uh, darling, there's some aspirin. I'll just go upstairs and lie down. Will you excuse me? Hmm. I just couldn't stay away. I'm sure of it. Have you been upstairs since you came home? No. Oh, when he walks into the bedroom, wow. No. Nothing will happen. But when he sees the pain, he won't see it. It isn't there. I need you copped out. No. I decided what was more important. Okay. But where is the pain? In the attic. The attic? Herb never goes up there, and I can decide what to do about it later. <laughs> But I couldn't decide what to do about it. And the reason was, I'd go up to the attic when Herb was away at the office. And I'd take the painting out from behind a partition where I'd hidden her. And I'd look at it. At this woman. Who had once been to Herb what I am doing now. His wife. And she would look at me and... At first I thought it was my imagination, but... The expression in her eyes would change. I know it's impossible. What's once set down in paint is frozen forever, but her look would change. Sometimes it would be a look of terror. Sometimes it would be a look of concern. Then, then it would be questioning, as if she wanted to ask me something. Or tell me something. Tell me something. I really would like to learn to play this stupid oh. game. Why? 
Charge it surprise her. It would soothe him. It would be something else we could do together. You better rest for a few minutes. You can't learn the game in one day. Oh, we... Tilly, hmm? whatever happened to that artist? It's a back in corral? Uh, I uh, heard he went mad. Is he still alive? I wouldn't know. How could I find out? Why? There's something I want to ask him about the portrait. What? How he could manage to make the facial expressions change. That has nothing to do with him. You're the one who's doing that. But I tell you, every time I look at that painting... I know. But you must either confront her with the painting. That word confront. Or you must get rid of it and put it from your mind. You make everything sound so grim. Why do you keep asking about the artist? I'm just curious. You said Herb didn't like the idea of Alma's posing. Why? He was jealous. Uh, look, did we come here to play tennis? How did the painting eventually wind up at the auction? Was it stolen that night? No. Herb, I guess, couldn't stand the sight of it, so he just got rid of it. He gave it back to Corral. But why? I don't know. If you want an answer to most of your questions, you'll just have to ask Herb. <laughs> Hello. Remember me? Who could ever forget you? The young lady who lives so dangerously. Can you imagine seventy-two fifty for a Sebastian Corral? Would you know him, Corral? No, no, no. But one of America's foremost painters, he is not, or was not, whatever the case may be. Then you wouldn't know where I could find him. I bet you're wrong. I know exactly where you can find him. You do? Uh-huh. Poor lad. He's in the state asylum. And he's bankrupt. Whatever he's got is being sold at auction. I, I come into it because all he's got is a couple of paintings. The state asylum. Yeah. That's how it goes. Especially with artists. A painter. He's good, but not really good enough. It drives him crazy. You know why? Because his hand doesn't have the exact skill to put down what he sees in his head. Thank you, nurse. I see him. Mr. Corral? Hello, Mr. Corral. Who are you? I thought we might chat. I don't know you. What do you want? I own one of your paintings. I... I don't paint anymore. I like this painting very much. It's called Young Lady with a Fan. How is Alma? Uh, Alma's... Oh. Don't say that. Don't say she's dead. But... Everyone says she is dead. But don't believe it. Alma was just with me. Right now, she's out playing tennis, but... But we are having dinner together tonight. See me? You actually see Alma? Oh, yes. We live here together. But Alma... I know, I know. Her subtly killed her. Her? But, but it's all right. She's here now, with me. I don't paint anymore. Why do you say her killed her? He was jealous. Oh, she ate that fan. And he said, if you won't pose with that fan, I won't commission the picture. Why? Why would he say that? I don't know. <laughs> He's crazy. <laughs> Is he dead now, too? It does not matter. So she said, uh, Alma said, I know that damn fan, but paint me in a tennis outfit so it'll look ridiculous. 
But what was there about the fan? I don't know. If you ask me, I think he killed her for the money. What money? Who are you? Uh, I just wanted to meet you, Mr. Crow. And... Is that my name? Sometimes I forget. Why would you want to meet me? Are you dead too? I left him. I went home. I went upstairs to the attic. And I looked at the portrait. The portrait of Alma. The young lady with the fan. And she looked at me. And her eyes were very large, and, and it seemed that they were brimming with tears. And of course, it was my imagination, but it seemed that those tears were for me. For me. It was almost as if she was, she was speaking to me, telling me something. Telling me to do something. What? What? What is it that I'm supposed to do? And then the voice, it was either on her lips or, or in my brain. And it said, down, ma'am. What can I do for you? My name is Anita Sutler. Sut? Sounds familiar. Huh? Let me try to place it. According to the newspaper reports five years ago... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mrs. Herbert Sutliff was murdered by a burglar. You, uh, must be the new Mrs. Sutliff. <laughs> I read where Detective Sergeant Tannenberg was the investigating officer. Yeah, yeah, I was on the case. Well, um, what can I do for you? Is the case closed, Lieutenant? Well, no unsolved murder case is ever officially closed. If you mean, is anyone currently working on it, the answer is no. It's inactive. Oh. Would you have any new evidence that could merit uh, further active investigation? Oh, no. No. Well, then uh, how can the police department help you? I don't know. I I just thought I I wanted to find out what had happened there that night. And since you were the police officer... I assume you read the newspaper accounts? Yes. I looked up and... Well, it's all in there. Neighbors thought they heard suspicious noises. We responded, found Mrs. Sutliff dead in her room. There'd been a struggle. The place was cleaned out. We uh, had no leads. That's all I can tell you. How was she killed? He shot her. Oh. And uh, I'm afraid I have no more definite information. A list of things that were taken, was it given to the police? Oh, yes, yeah. And we circulated that list among various places that would buy valuables. And did anything ever show up? None of our sources ever reported anything. Hmm. This list, is it still in existence? Why do you ask? I don't know. Yes, yes, it's still in the files. I'm sorry I took up so much of your time, Lieutenant. I hope I've been of service. Take my advice. Keep away from the police. Tilly, all I did was ask about the murder. Why? Well... It happened in my bedroom. I'm curious. You should never appear to be curious where there's an unsolved murder. Why? Because that, in turn, arouses the curiosity of the police. But it might do some good if they did become curious. No, dear. Not if they become curious about you. Lieutenant Tannenberg. 
Oh, yeah, Chappie. Yeah, I did call. Remember the Alma Sutliff thing? You and I went out on it five years ago. Well, the new wife was just here. And guess what she wanted to know? Is there still a list of the stolen stuff? In other words, is it still hot? Very big, innocent eyes. But she could have been in on it. Well, I checked. He married her three months after he buried the first one. How great stricken could he have been? Yes. You go about what you think are your own private and personal affairs, matters which concern nobody but you, and then, without ever being aware of it, you can reach the crucial point where you no longer control the situation. And you have no way of knowing that something you thought was strictly your own business has suddenly and ominously become official business. Official police business. I shall return shortly with Act Three. I want that sinus medicine. Headache tablets? No, sinus medicine. Sinus tablets. Help the headache and the pressure. Oh, you mean sign off. Exactly. Headache pain is one thing. A sinus headache is something else. Sometimes your whole face can seem to throb with pain. You want relief. Take sign off tablets. S I N E O F F. The sinus medicine that gives you a full dose of pure aspirin plus a sinus grainer. Sign off. The sinus medicine that helps relieve sinus pain while you drain. And sign off doesn't stop there. Have you tried sign off sinus spray? The fastest known form of sinus congestion relief. It works in seconds. That sign off sinus spray. When sinus flares up, use sign off tablets and spray only as directed. S I N E O F F. Sign off. Exactly. Sign off. The sinus medicines in the bright red box. Did you know that more children die from being hit by automobiles and from any other cause? 10,000 pedestrians and cyclists are killed, and another 500,000 are injured in our country every year. And most of these casualties happen to children, especially after dark. There is something to keep your children safer after dark. A safety kit of hot dots, reflective stick-ons that give off a blast of light. Drivers can see them from 600 feet away. Protect your children at night and on dark school mornings. Stick hot dots on bicycles, clothing, books, lunch boxes. Get your hot dots kit free at Northwest Federal Savings, one block west of Cicero Avenue on Irving Park Road, or in displays on Dempster Street, just east of the Tri-State Tollway. But hurry, our supply is limited. A message from Northwest Federal Savings to help keep your children safer after dark. This is WBBM Chicago. A relationship between two human beings is an unbelievably complex cradle of attitudes, ideas, privileges. And very early in the game, each person learns that if the relationship is to endure, certain actions must be overlooked. Certain questions must never be asked. Certain boundaries may never be crossed, or else the intricate web will come apart, never to be spun again. Darling. Yes? I think you should see a doctor. Who oh, but Herb, I feel fine. Then you look so... so pale lately, and, and you seem to be so nervous. I can't imagine why. Darling, I, I want you to take care of yourself. But Herb, I do. Anita, I love you so much. If, if anything ever happened to you, I don't know what I'd do. What could happen to me? Oh, darling, it, it, it's such a crazy world, filled with such mad people. If only we could shut it all out and live by ourselves, for us. 
I couldn't keep away from that portrait. She was a stranger. It was as if she was my sister. Because between us, a bond stronger than blood. Our bond was a man. The same man. And so my days were spent more and more in the attic. Herbert would leave. I would go up to I would look at Alma. She would look at me. And there was communication between us. Why do you say poor Anita? Sebastian Corral. You were having an affair with him. And now you're jealous of me. You're trying to reach out from the grave to destroy Herbert's new marriage. Why? I have no money. I was so so terrified, so absolutely distraught. I did something for the first time. I actually went to her office in the middle of a business day. Feeling better, darling? So much better. Your secretary makes excellent coffee. I'm sorry I barged in on you. Well, I understand that's what husbands are for. Whatever gave you such a fright? Nothing. Nothing, just nerves. You must see a doctor. You're the best doctor. All I need is you. And all I need is you. Oh, Herb. I'm so happy when I'm with you. I'm so happy. But I'd better leave so you can sell some stocks and bonds. Well, incidentally, uh, what are you doing this afternoon? Nothing. Oh, then you can see this doctor. I feel fine. No, uh, this is uh, this is something else. Oh? There's insurance. You know, we uh, have to think about... Insurance? Well, my company has a great husband-wife policy. I can get $75,000 worth of life insurance for you attached right onto my own. But... Darling, the... there's no reason why you shouldn't have insurance, is there? <laughs> well, is there... No reason why I shouldn't have insurance. Stop that. No. 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 Happy birthday, darling. Oh. <laughs> Anyone else saying that would sound phony, but I believe you. I actually believe you didn't know it was your birthday. Darling, the urge to forget becomes stronger as we grow older. Yes, that's true, but um, I'm afraid there's something else. Something else? Mm, these past weeks. You've been so preoccupied. Have I? Well, you won't go to a doctor. But I did. I, I had my insurance exam. The doctor said I was fine. Well, this must be a night for pure enjoyment. Yes, darling. I, um, uh, I have a gift. Oh, Herb, you shouldn't. Now, dear, you know you'd have been brokenhearted if I didn't. <laughs> That's true. Here. Go on, open your gift. Oh, my. Hmm? Oh. It's the most 
precious thing I own. It belonged to my mother. Oh. Yes, it is breathtaking. The pure ivory and pearl. The workmanship is fantastic. A fan like this, it, it's a museum piece. I... Well, dear, one of our... Uh, our ancestors it was in the China trade back in the clipper ship days. He, uh, he brought it home. <laughs> You're supposed to belong to an empress. I don't know what to say. You can say anything. Just give me a kiss. I was in the neighborhood of Lieutenant Tannenberg, and I, I wondered if I could just take a minute. We're here to serve you, ma'am. Well, there's an heirloom. It has sentimental value for my husband, and he wasn't sure if it was one of those things that was stolen during the robbery. Well, he has the list. He can check it. Well, it, you see, it was a long time ago, and the list has been lost or misplaced. Oh. Well, in that case, let's look at the one we have. As a matter of fact, I have the file right here on my desk. You do? Mm-hmm. You mean the police are opening up? No, well, we just have a periodic review of all the records. Here we are. Sutmate Alma. List of stolen items. Here it is. Fan. Antique quality Chinese pearl and ivory. Yeah, yeah, this must be it. And it was stolen. Well, according to uh, what Mr. Sutcliffe attested to at the time, yes, it was part of the loop. Thank you, Lieutenant. Thank you very much. The chicken is a bit underdone. I made it the same way. And it's tough. Tastes the same as usual. Now, dear, it's not that you have very much to do all day. You could at least take time and prepare a decent meal. Herbert, what are you saying? I'm telling you that dinner has been just thrown together as if... You never found any fault with my cooking before. You never gave me reason to. Herb, this is no way to talk to me. You have a lot to learn. Herbert, what's gotten into you? This meal is unfit to eat. I'll have my dinner at the restaurant. Herbie. And I shall have my dinner out every night until you learn how to cook properly. No, 
I don't believe it. It's a dream. All of it, you, and the way Herbert just spoke to me, it's a dream. out of your mind completely, then, well, after a while, it doesn't exist. Why did you kill her? I had to. She came home. I, I didn't expect her. She found me at the safe. Her money had come, her inheritance, in negotiable bonds. And I needed them because I was, well, I was short. But she wouldn't listen. And that's why you killed her? But she brought it on herself. It was her fault. Where, where are you going? Away from me. No. No, don't leave me. Please. I thought you were different. But you're like all women. You can't be trusted. Please. You'll go to the police. Go to I knew I couldn't trust you. Let me tell you what's going to happen to you. <laughs> See? You have a little workroom up here. You do things with art and sewing. You must have taken a nap. And while you were smoking, a terrible thing happened. You must have fallen asleep. I don't think that's what's going to happen. Who are you? What are you doing here? I'm a police officer. You must remember me. Now, Mr. Sutliff, will you come quietly? I didn't do anything. You take him down, Chappie. Uh, I, I didn't do anything. Could I, could I just sit down for a minute? I guess I was wrong about you. I thought you and he killed his first wife and were waiting for things to cool down. I didn't even know he was married. Then how did you know he killed her? She told me. Who told you? She did. Look at her. <laughs> That's just a painting. Was it? As a matter of fact, I remember that uh, it was in the bedroom where we found the body. Corral. That's the artist's name. Yeah, I remember. I read in the paper the guy went nuts because he felt he wasn't good enough. On the other hand, he may have been... Too good. What does a painter put in a portrait? Who knows? You hear it said of a particular good likeness that the artist captured his subject. Can that be taken literally? Take me literally when I tell you I'll be back shortly. If you take a look at the 1975 cars, you'll notice a European influence. And there are some new American cars that rival the Europeans. One being Buick's new Skylark SR, with its touring car interior and spirited little V6 engine. But don't think of the Skylark SR as a European tourer. We're proud of the fact that it's a Buick. You will be, too. Buick. Dedicated to the free spirit in just about everyone. 
Sure, I've heard that phrase, give to the college of your choice. Good idea. And I know all colleges need more money, what with inflation and all. It's just that since I graduated, I've been so busy, not just with my career, but with the community affairs, too, I haven't found the time to reevaluate. Take the time now and give more to the college of your choice. Now. A public service message of this station and the Advertising Council. So many people are like Anita Sutliff. So many men and women who say, Don't rock the boat. Don't make waves. Don't open a can of worms. And yet, so typical. Aren't most of us desperately anxious to preserve what we have at any cost? And isn't it the saddest truth that many of us would rather live in a fool's paradise than a wise man's hell? Our cast included K.T. Stevens, Amzie Strickland, Alan Reed, and Brett Morrison. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. We have an instant voodoo doll. Fascinating, isn't it? To know that the doll is meant to be a representation of you? And look at it. I'm looking. Yeah, well, keep looking. I don't take your eyes off of it. You can almost see your face in the cloth, can't you? It's almost as if the doll is you. Whatever happens to the doll happens to you. Sharing one body between you. One life. One destiny. I, I just think it's silly. All right. And let's see what happens when I take this letter knife. What are you going to do? Nothing. I'm merely going to plunge this knife into a meaningless piece of cloth. No, don't! <laughs> Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Sinoff, the sinus medicines. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs> <laughs>